What's up, John boy? I'm kind of excited. I'm getting ready. This week, I'll get the iPhone 12. I'm on that always upgrade plan. So I got in on the pre-order. Pretty excited about it. Not going to lie. Interesting to a degree. And, and I'm not even going to pick on you for once. Just like a generalized perception kind of thing. But it bewilders me how the majority of the population is just very cheap and against buying a phone. And I'm not saying it's a light purchase, but I think we were all just so spoiled for so many years of like every time you upgrade, you get one. It's what, 600 to a grand, something like that? And again, that's not a, a light chunk of money. But what do any of us use more than our phones for the most part? If you're on that upgrade plan, I mean, literally all I'm doing is going in and paying sales tax for the new phone and then my bill does not change. Oh, so it's kind of like one of those continuous lease things like with a car. A hundred percent. In my mind, I'm like, my bill is not changing. It's stupid for me not to go get the new technology with what we do for the podcast and all that other stuff. All I'm really doing is just going in and paying 120 bucks and getting a brand new phone. I get it. But I mean, like, think about how people spend on, you know, a nice two or three meals, um, a nice piece of clothing or jewelry, some shoes, or, or even better, a nice bottle of bourbon or two. Come on. And I am going to use my phone a hell of a lot more than I'm going to drink one bottle of bourbon. Well, yeah, because, I mean, if you had anything that good, you'd never open it. Everyone, my name is John Edwards, and with me as always is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad's Drink of Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. I am going to get you for that one, Zeke Baker. <laughs> you know you can come open any single one of my bottles whenever you want. Hey, you, you also know it's the, the unscripted, unplanned punchlines that are always the best. I love when we get each other. The best is when I get you, because you really don't expect it. <laughs> How are you, my friend? How's your week been going? Not too bad. Not too bad. I got to, you know, have a couple of days off the grid this past weekend. The, uh, I guess, you know, the unofficial DDV fall winter uh, tour is, is kicked off now. Granted, there'll be some events that you and I both uh, show up as, as tandem to and somewhere the folks only get one half of the dynamic duo. But it felt good to, to see some people and, and enjoy just a few hours in a room with folks you know, sharing light pours, bullshit more than anything, and just meeting people you know through online communities and boards and whatnot. There's just nothing more genuine than that still. A hundred percent. And I'm looking forward to it. I know that you were in Kentucky last weekend. I'll be in Kentucky this weekend. I know Grains and Grits is coming up. We have Lauren Simpson's event. We have a Bar Sound Bourbon Company event that I'll be going to. So whole bunch of stuff going on within the next month. At the end of November, I'm going to have two Golden Doodle puppies and I won't be going anywhere for a while. Not even the gym? No, I'll be at the gym every morning. No days off. What are the puppies going to do? Hang around in the enclosure I got them or their crate or spend a lot of money on these dogs. They're very well taken care of. But they're puppies. They're not going to be trained. Yeah, so I got a puppy pad. I can wash it. Everything's good. So how many months before these uh, well taken care of puppies take over uh, you, the, the space you're currently occupying there and on the, uh, the John Bourbon DDB room? They're not going to be allowed upstairs for a very long time, so it's okay. Yeah, I see that lasting. I mean, if they come up here and cuddle with me at night, it's okay. They are going to want to hang out with me a lot. They are going to want to see me as their pack leader. So it's okay. I understand if they want to come upstairs with me. <laughs> the, the poor world, those things are going to find out about then one day. I think they're going to love me. Anyways, let's get into this. Today's show is sponsored by CastCartel.com, changing the industry standard as to how you get your alcohol. They are like the Amazon of the spirits industry, the premium spirits marketplace where you can go and they hook you up with merchants that will send whiskey directly to your door. It's allocation season. Obviously, some of the allocated bourbons are going to be more expensive because you don't have to wait in line. It's totally a convenient thing. So yes, the price is going to be more expensive on cascartel.com, but the price for your daily drinkers are going to be on par with what you get in the store. Go ahead and check them out. 
Also follow them on Instagram at Cast Cartel. They are always doing awesome giveaways for their followers. Today's show is also sponsored by our good friends at premiumbarproducts.com, the place where you can go to get the official dad's drinking bourbon, Glen Karen. It is also the place it is getting to be holiday season. And what better thing to give somebody that you care about than laser etched glassware? Use code DADS10 for 10% off your order. They have all sorts of different glasses and barware that you can personalize and laser etch. Now, if you're a group or you are a store or a distillery and you want to do a bigger wholesale order, reach out to me. I am more than happy to get you in touch with the folks at premiumbarproducts.com. Our friend Benton just reached out to me. He had a work event. They wanted to get a whole bunch of laser etch glassware. I hooked him up with Janie and Carson and Vicky and the good folks at Premium premiumbarproducts.com. Zeke, we're drinking something we've drank before. Our friend Tony Gonzalez was on the show from Treaty Oak, but Treaty Oak has sent us a newer version of their Ghost Hill bourbon. This is an 18-month-old at least bourbon. It's 95 proof, reading the side because they said it very, very well. Ghost Hill bourbon is named for our 28-acre home in Dripping Springs, Texas, made with 57% Texas. Get ready for this, Zeke. Yellow Dent number one corn, <laughs> 32% Texas wheat, and 11% American barley, a genuine grain to glass bourbon. This was all distilled and bottled by Treaty Oak in Dripping Springs, Texas. Back up one second, though. What's the mash on this? It is 57% corn, 32% wheat, and 11% barley. Well, I'm a little perplexed here. I'll leave it at that. What is uh, befuddling you, Zeke Baker? I get a good amount of rye throughout this. Are you sure that isn't just the youth that is coming in a little hot? I don't think so. I mean, I didn't get, I didn't say I got heat. All right, before we go too far, uh, ADD without a format here, I'll, I'll just give you the notes and you can come no, back. I mean, in. it's okay. We're having a conversation about whiskey, but I'm very interested to hear what you got on this whiskey. I mean, I would would have legit bet this was a low rye rye over a bourbon almost. Really? Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Either that or you botched up the sample you gave me. I did <laughs> not botch up the sample I gave you. What did you get on this whiskey? It kind of reminded me of a gingerbread house. And I'll explain that a little bit because there's kind of like the, you know, that kind of ginger smell to it, the sugars and whatnot that come off. And honestly, a little bit of like a rye base. But then also a confection that comes off over them. And I really kind of imagined the green gumdrops that are kind of sitting in the sugar that go on like the, the border of the roof, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It, it really popped in my head. But yeah, kind of like a just a confectionary sugar or something that was sitting on top of, a, you know, there was some youth and corn that came in behind that for me, but not a, you know, in a large amount. Visiting again, the youth definitely showed itself a little bit more and, and also picked up flashes of uh, caramel and nougat palette wise. I, I mean, I, I thought it followed the nose to me. The, the first thing I really picked up was a, a minty note somewhere, you know, spearmint, winter mint, winter greenish, you know. And then, you know, towards the mid palette, a little further back, it was, seemed to be a little caramel and kind of that sawdusty feel you get from stuff that's younger. I did pick that up some, but just it didn't dominate the profile by any means. And finish wise, there was a singe at the back, no hug that really goes down, and you know, not much of a pronounced flavor, but just kind of that, ah, this is a moderate proof whiskey or our product that I had going down the back, and it kind of tells you that as it makes the turn. Nose, I said heavy grain. And it's not just the corn on the grain. I, I get that wheat there too. And I think that's probably what's throwing you a little bit in where you're kind of replacing the wheat for a rye. But you get heavy grain, vanilla, cherry. The taste, I said it's young. I know that's not the best tasting note, but if you know, you kind of get it. It's that lemon and lime. Grain, it's more wheat than corn. On the taste, it's not a heavy corn taste for me. It's more of that wheat side of it and the barley side. Cherries, vanilla, like you said, a lot of this follows the nose for me. The finish is where I felt like 
the whiskey got to shine. I know that's opposite of what you were saying, but I feel like it's where the sweetness really comes through and the graininess really subsides. That's where I was able to experience a little bit more different flavors and catch a couple other things other than that grain that really dominates the nose and the the palate for me. I got to figure out where you've been smelling grains from. It's like raw mash bill is what I'm getting on the nose and the taste. So like a white dog? No, it's like, like a white dog. Grains being milled. I'm talking about like if you picked up the mash bill, like the, the grains being milled or just even the raw stuff. You had raw corn, raw wheat, raw barley, and you picked it up and you smelled it. That's kind of what I'm getting. Maybe some of that. I don't don't expect us to see eye to eye here. True story. So what notes would you pin on the wheat in the palate? I mean, it's kind of like if you've spent time on a farm, you get it. No, I said palate mean like when you taste it, what tastes like a wheater to you? It's a raw mash bill taste. I'm not getting any spice. I'm not getting rye from it, but it's that young raw taste that I have in my mouth. I mean, I don't get white dog or beer out of this. No, it's not like that. It's like the actual grains. You've just been chewing on grains like they're sunflower seeds? I mean, you don't get my size out of nowhere. Those aren't grains you've been chewing on like sunflower seeds. <laughs> grains ain't going to do that to you, buddy. Well, Twinkies are the same color, right? I'm telling you, I really get like that green gumdrop kind of thing out of this. I don't know. I get that lemon lime. I mean, that's always a big flag for youth for me. But now here's the kicker. This is 45 to $50. At 95 proof? At 95 proof. Where do you stand on this? I mean, I think we've said before a few times, you know, sub 100 proof at, at that price point is a, a tough area of the market to crack in and maintain a, a, a foothold on unless you got a really good spokesperson, a really cool looking bottle, and uh, maybe somebody that's got a better looking body pouring samples in the store than me and you do. I just think it's really tough to take an 18 month old whiskey at least charge 45, 50 bucks on it when there's better stuff that's four years old and 15 bucks on the shelf. It might not be 95 proof. It might be 80 proof. It might be another, you know, but there are cheaper whiskeys. I understand this is a craft whiskey. I would say that there is stuff at Treaty Oak that I'd like better we had that one-year-old whiskey the red white and blue that i thought was really really good i'm not saying this is bad i'm just saying i think this needs a little more age to round out the rawness like i know they know how to make a great whiskey down there at treaty oak i know they know how to blend their red handed i know they've done rum their gin is great it's not anything to do with the way they distill i just don't think this is ready where it needs to be at 18 months old well it might be ready it's just not ready for the price point it's at i think that's the toughest parts you know even when you catch a sale with folks that you know at this price it's just hard to i feel like capture repeat success and or how often you're gonna get that just because I mean, at least to me, I'd be like, ah, 45 bucks. I don't know. I mean, I know they say everything's bigger in Texas, but unless the amount of money in the wallet is too, it's tough to have this as a a daily drinker-ish. And we know Texas age is a little bit different than everywhere else. So probably if you gave this six months to a year, it might round it out a little bit. I think this could be a really good whiskey. I think it needs more time. I mean, I'm really getting that raw ingredient At least for me, I know you're not getting that, but it doesn't feel cooked. I feel like I'm tasting the batter and I'm not tasting the cake. Where the cake batter can be good in its own right, but you also know like if I let it bake, it's going to be better. And that, folks, is our Mrs. Doubtfire moment of the week from John. I think I am a pass, but it's on my watch list. Yeah, I'd go with that, that, that ranking here. Not a bad pour at all, especially for a younger whiskey. Knowing what you're getting in the product, I wouldn't want it to hurt the wallet as bad. Uh, To me, as funny as that sounds, it makes it more enjoyable. I think this comes out $25, $30. I'm fine getting a bottle of it. Yeah, for sure. 
Go ahead and find us on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Find us wherever you download your podcast. Chances are you already have because you're listening to us right now. Please leave us an open and honest review, just like we leave open and honest reviews about the whiskey we drink. Those actually really help us and help people find us. Thank you to Treaty Oak for sending us a bottle of this Ghost Hill bourbon. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? In good old Nashville, Tennessee, for the most part. And as we mentioned earlier, a few other select spots here and there over the next few months, hopefully. Cheers, Big Red. Ciao. Ciao.